Welcome back to CCTV's News Bulletin with the following headlines. An interview on Taiwan and a statement on circular economy. But we'll start with some questions and answers from the Q&A on Reach. The following question was raised. In the new ECA info card for chemicals, I see hazard classifications made by other notifiers for a non-hazardous substance of my company. How can this be resolved? We have had a lot of comments since we have published the info cards and uh, we have tried recently and we will continue to make more visible what is coming from the registration dossier or, and what is coming from the CNL notification. Uh, the second part of the, my reply will be that uh, we have applied a threshold for the CNL notification. Uh, so it means that it's not only one notifier who has made a different notification, a different CNL notification. There are many, actually. And uh, there may be good reasons for that. And since we have published this information in the info card, suddenly we have, that's what I was saying this morning or yesterday, we have a lot of comments coming to ECA, and that's great. Because it means that the companies start to realize that some other players have classified differently. And the whole purpose of the CNL inventory is to agree on the classification. Confidentiality is often important, but not always needed. For instance, the location of the social event, not really confidential, but always fun to keep you and my team curious. One person should also join us there, our local reporter. So let's connect with her to see what she's up to today. Hello, Annemarie, what are you doing? Oh, hello, Tjeerd. Right now I'm in the Rijksmuseum, as you know, the national museum of our country. Famous for the Night Watch, painted by Rembrandt van Rijn. But there's more to see. Here in the alcoves, for example, you can find other magnificent paintings from the hand of famous painters from the 17th century, like The Milkmaid by Johannes Vermeer, or The Jewish Bride by Rembrandt, a painting that was actually the favorite of another famous Dutch painter who in his time used to frequent this Rijksmuseum, Vincent van Gogh. The intimacy of the double portrait appealed to him. Vincent was probably also pleased by Rembrandt's use of coarse brushstrokes, a way of painting that defied the rule book on how one was expected to paint in the 17th century. Two centuries later, Van Gogh would follow in Rembrandt's footsteps. Thank you, very educational. Are you also following in their footsteps? Oh no, if only I could. I'm just practicing my drawing techniques. You might not have guessed it, but I sketched some birds. Here in the Rijksmuseum, they have every Saturday drawing day. They even provide you with a sketchbook and a pencil. By drawing and looking intensely at the works of art, you can truly experience their beauty. Great initiative, but shouldn't you be on the way to the location of the social event? I would love to, but can you tell me where it is? I would love to, but we never do. I can tell you this, it's in Amsterdam, and it's not in a museum. And for the rest, just follow your notes. But if you like, you can explore the museum a little bit longer. One of my favorites is the lovely Asian pavilion that houses a rich collection of Asian art. We will also discuss a piece of Asian art. I spoke about the Taiwanese chemical control legislation with Joe Lee and Mei Yong Song. Here are some highlights of that interview. Um, Joe, could you tell me what to expect on the revisions of the Toxic Chemical Substance Control Act and the Occupational Safety and Health Act? Yes, uh, as TJ just men mentioned about, it's a lot of things to chew on, particularly only focus on Taiwan's TASCA and uh, um, Occupational Safety and Health Act. Both, pay, uh, both regulations pay quite a lot of attention on chemical management recently with the inspiration of EU reach as well as other jurisdictions. So on top of the registration, I would like to mention about the SDS as well as hazard communication. Also in the Ministry of Labor, which is the uh, Occupational Safety and Health Act, require health exposure assessment in the workplace as well as some prioritized chemical substance and the chemicals require annual reporting. And uh, we should put more attention on that, which is life cycle management inside and outside the workplace as well. Please watch the complete interview on our website and YouTube channel. And now it's time for the statement of the day. At Chemcon, we're not only looking into the legal frameworks of today, but also of tomorrow. Today, a statement on circular economy. In our studio, Mr. Bart van der Velpen of Royal Haskoning DH3. Bart, welcome. Thank you. Bart, for many years, you're already involved in strategic and innovative approaches for the chemical industry. Can you sketch how 
that would look like in 2020, 2025? Based on our experience with the chemical industry, uh, we see that there is a shift to, towards resource efficient, uh, energy efficient, but also uh, low carbon industry. Simply to keep the European uh, in chemical industry, but the industry in general, competitive. Um, and one of the uh, solutions is, for example, uh, resource efficient solutions, we call that SAC economy solutions, uh, where we try to find a solution um, link linking uh, different industries together, we call that industrial symbiosis improving in fact the clusters, the industrial clusters in Europe, or uh, that we try to transform a linear supply chain in, into a closed loop supply chain. And what we see is that the current, uh, the current reality hampers uh, that, that implementation. Uh, and that is not only because it's a technical, but also a political and a an, uh, legal and also an, uh, an economical challenge in order to implement that. And your statement is? My statement today is the implementation of circular economy solutions are hampered by the multitude of European legislative frameworks. That is a statement. Let us know your views on this one. Bart, thank you very much. Thank you. To finalize our forecast of the day, our main focus is Korea and Taiwan. After that, we look into the future of the chemical industry in 2020 and beyond with, among others, Psychem and Green Chemistry. Thank you for watching and enjoy this evening's social event.